Hello everyone, Corvus once again, and this is part 4 in the How to Paint Radagasta Brown video series. In case you missed out the previous videos, you can check the links in the video description. They will point you to the previous episodes. This episode is going to be a bit longer than the previous ones. Actually, it's going to be a bit more than 20 minutes because I, w I decided to do three different surfaces in this video being the cloak which I'm, I'm working on right now and then the sleeves which come out of the cloak and then yeah, around his arms he has this kind of bandages or another cloak which goes underneath remember the previous videos we painted the pants and yeah, then some kind of shirt is coming out of the, the cloak we painted it in a light brown and that's also the color we're going to use again for the bottom sleeves and the bandages around his arm around his arms we're going to use the same color for that and then the other brown we used for his inner cloak that's the brown we are going to use for the sleeves and then another brown actually this is mahogany sand I think it's called let me check so you yeah, have a Lego model color mahogany sand which is a slightly reddish brown and that's the brown I'm going to use for his cloak so again before painting even the first uh, cloak or like what I did in uh, in the third episode in the previous episode before I started working on these surfaces yeah, I really studied the miniature to check out which surfaces I wanted to give which color because he has three or four layers of clothing on him so I really wanted to make sure it was in a logical colors that I was painting the same parts of clothing in the same color and also because I wanted to, to limit limit my palette a lot I didn't want to have f four five different browns on this model just try to limit it as much as possible for example, I'm not yet sure what I'm going to do with the, with the cap on his head, but I'm probably going to use one of the browns I previously used, so maybe the brown I'm currently painting, the mahogany sand, but I think I'd rather go for the, for the neutral brown I used for the inner cloak. I'm also going to use that for the, for the cap as a way of limiting the palette. So here I'm currently shading, just using black, painted some, uh, used some black in the mix of the mahogany sand to do the shading. As usual, I think I painted on two shades and then some almost black to do the black lining, so the, the shades between the different surfs, the final shading is done with almost black. And now I've started highlighting this and I think I just mixed in some uh, some white. Now, I don't think it's visible yet here, but the cloak has some kind of texture to it, so there are plants and flowers textured on that. So it's rather hard to paint, especially at, at this level. I think if you really go for a dry brush miniature, you can dry brush these details. And if you go for a showcase quality, you can uh, you can almost freehand over them, but here I'm going somewhere in between, I'm going for a good tabletop standard, so I had to come up with a solution for this. So in a minute you'll see me applying the next uh, layers of highlighting, so now I'm highlighting the cloak as usual. But in the next highlighting layer we'll start working on the, on the detailing, so just quickly painting over the details. So basically a quick version of the 
the freehand solution I, I said I you could you could do it when working on a showcase quality model. So you can all already see me gently tracing over some of the detailing, but this is mostly regular highlighting. Just trying to take out some of the pick out some of the details here and there. So I think this is a bit of a mistake of the sculptor that the details on the on the cloak are a bit too shallow, a bit too shallow for for dry brushing and also a bit too shallow for washing. I think. So I think it would be better to just leave them off or make him a bit a uh, bit deeper. So it's a bit more clear that I'm trying to go over the the plants and the flowers just to make them a bit more prominent but I think after the next highlight I'm going to apply a wash because I wasn't really pleased with the with the final effect just to make the contrast of the detailing a bit stronger I used a, a wash And I think that brings us to a, to a question I wanted to answer. Uh, let me check who asked it. Oh yeah, it was uh, Werner. So he's a Belgian guy also. Uh, been in touch with him through email a while ago. A very friendly fellow. Uh, who basically, yeah, he wants to uh, improve his painting, I guess. So Werner, thanks again for, uh, for the question. And the question was, uh, maybe you could explain why you use shading instead of washes. Now, shading and washes are two, two different things. Because uh, washes, they're a way to, to shade. And the, the way I sh usually shade is by layering darker paints. So that's a technique of, of shading. Uh, washes, I rarely use them. Uh, only for special occasions. As you will see in a minute when I'm going to apply the wash on a, on a cloak here. Uh, I think washes are great for gaming quality figures. But why I prefer for quality level like the one I'm painting right now. Why I prefer washes here is uh, prefer the, the regular layering shading here. Is to have more control because a wash you, you don't have that much control over the wash. It's just uh, putting a bunch of the wash on your brush and just brushing it over the area, entire area you want to to apply it to, you want to change. And then, yeah, you just have to let the wash do its work and go into the recesses. That's very hard to have the shades and the highlights in exactly the, the places that you want them to be. For example, as you can see on the back of this miniature, that's not very clear right now, but there are a couple of folds in the, in the cloth, three or four folds. And this is me applying a wash. I'm doing two layers, by the way. So, if you really want a bit of shading there in the, in the folds, then it's very hard to to achieve that with a wash. On the other hand, with with regular paint, with tint regular paint, which is also a bit transparent, like a wash, you can really control the paint to go there. But as a warning, yeah, this is a bit of a more advanced technique. So it requires practice and if you're used to applying washes to do shading yeah, then it's something entirely different but yeah <clears throat> if you want to improve your painting then it's really something you 
you uh, have to check out. So you're applying the wash. You can have some control with the wash. You can, when the, when the wash is on the model, you can use your brush to uh, to draw it away from raised areas or to pull it into recesses. It usually dries slowly. This is a Vallejo uh, wash, by the way. So they they tend to dry very slowly. So it gives you a lot of working time to correct mistakes or to put more wash in, uh, pull it away from areas to other areas that you want. So Werner, I hope this is a bit more clear to you. If not, yeah, you know my email address or you can drop me a, a line through uh, the messaging service of YouTube and I invite anyone to do so. Uh, if you have any questions, please post them in the comment section or if you don't want your uh, question to be public, then yeah, feel free to send me an, uh, a message. I'm happy to help you. So here I'm painting the most inner sleeves, so the bandage-like sleeves, and again I'm using the same mix as I did for the for the leggings, the legs, uh, the pants, sorry, and the and the shirt, which was let me check a uh, 50/50 mix of khaki gray and uh, deck tan, yeah, shaded with black and highlighted with more deck tan and white. Um, yeah, if you want more details on this. And you can go to the previous video and check out how I painted uh, the pants. Let me check if there is another question I can address. Oh yeah, somebody asked uh, about my uh, paint water ratio. So in the meantime I put up a video about how I thin paints. So I invite you to check out that video. There will also be a link on the screen here. If it's not there yet, then please check again in a few hours. Because usually I say, I notice that I say, check the link on the screen, but then usually the day after I, uh, when I check out the video again on YouTube, I say, oops, I forgot to put the link on the screen. <coughs> so if, if it's not there, then, uh, Sorry for the mistake, but if you go to my channel, there's a video called How I Paint, Thinning Paints. And that's all about the paint and water ratio, so the ratio used for thinning. And basically, yeah, to formulate the answer here again, which is also in the video, there's no magic recipe for the, for the paint thinning. It all comes down to what paint you're using and why you're using it, or, but basically for for base coating, um, I think my ratio, I usually put two or three drops of uh, paint on my palette and then I then I dunk my, uh, my mixing brush in the water and I put that brush, I uh, mix that water that's in the brush uh, with, the, with the paint that's on my palette. That's also something I demonstrate in the thinning paint video. So you don't want to thin that base coat paint too much to make it transparent but you also yeah, you must thin it because when you take it right out of the bottle it's, it's too thick and it won't go on smoothly so it's also better to uh, to use two layers there's a couple of surfaces here that I painted on uh, one which I painted uh, two layers um, yeah actually this is a mistake in the editing I think so yeah because this, this video is rather long I think I started with an hour and ten minutes of uh, filmed material so I did a lot of uh, cutting away uh, a lot of editing so if you see me take a model away from the from the camera like I just did that are usually the sequences I cut out and then when that's all done I speed it up two times so that now I'm ended up with uh, 20 minutes of video, which is rather long. So if there are some longer periods of silence, then uh, yeah, it's a bit hard to to uh, fill the 20 minutes with with talking. But right now we're in, at the 15 minute mark, so I'm still doing all right, I guess. So what I wanted to say about uh, the the base coats is that. 
for example the surface I'm painting on right now I'm putting on the first layer and then I'm also usually doing a second layer of base coat and I don't think that's shown on the video at least not for all surfaces so we'll check that out in a minute because this paint I'm doing uh, applying right now I'm sure I applied two layers of that because as you might see on the on the sleeve I just painted on the top of it there's still some it's a bit of a bit transparent the paint layer that's going on right now so that's really if you see that then yeah you know just let it dry like in this shot it's very visible but, um, just let it dry and apply a second layer over that which is tint a bit more so I've cut that out ob quite obviously now so I'm now working on the on the shading already but I think I addressed this in uh, one of the previous videos that for most surfaces and most paints that a base coat of two thin layers is much better than one uh, thick layer So yeah, another reason I wanted to have uh, these three surfaces in one video is that after this I think yeah, the, the boring stuff is over and there's a lot of detailing going on on the model and that's something we can start working on in the next video. So what's up next is probably the, the hair and beard. After that I'm going to do the cap and then this plant bag is carrying and then some other detailing. It's uh, not, some other detailing needs to be finished like the stuff and then of course the base which is going to take up a bit of time also I guess and then of course this guy is carrying this uh, uh, hedgehog I forgot his name is Simon or something and that's also go go going to be a ch quite of a challenge to, to paint him I think I'm going to paint him in, in grey or something not brown because uh, on the other hand, grey and his beard is also grey, so I really want uh, want the hedgehog to to be a small point of uh, attention. So use a bright color for him. I'm not yet sure what which one. Let me check the box art. Um, so yeah, on the box is also light light brown. It's also not very well visible on the box, but we'll see. We'll see what comes up. I'm usually not a person who really fixes uh, color schemes in advance. I'm usually someone who takes a couple of paints. I usually take a couple of paints in front of me. Sometimes mix some stuff on the on the palette and then decide which I, what I'm going to to use. So here's the highlighting. So again for this brown I used the same mix as the inner cloak that I did in the previous video which was a 50-50 mix of I guess chocolate brown and flat earth I think yeah and then shading with black and highlighting with medium flesh tone yeah and white but you can again you can uh, check out that recipe in the previous video so we're coming close to the end here putting on the final highlights here on the on the sleeves I gotta say uh, so far I'm very pleased about the result there's a lot of variation in the in the browns but again I'm only used three different colors now on the model and then uh, of course for the the skin I really like how it uh, tied everything or everything is tied together and in the next videos yeah I think it will be a lot more fun to paint uh, the detailing and by all means yeah keep the questions coming if you have any as you noticed I have plenty of time to uh, to answer your questions in these videos
that's all. I hope you enjoyed this rather long uh, video. It wasn't too boring, I hope. And I hope to see you very soon in the next part, in part 5. Thanks again, bye.